Uh, now we're on to, so the minutes are approved. Uh, financial statements, and we're virtually signing warrants also. Or we already did, right? And we are again? Yeah, so we had six warrants already signed electronically, totaling $37,256.26. Um, we spoke with the town accountants and decided to run two warrant cycles a month to get on the town schedule, which allows them to space out their work better. Um, so a second batch of warrants went out to you today, which I know a couple of people I think have already signed. Um, so there were additional three warrants totaling $16,331.33. So I'll, I'll get to mine after the meeting, so. No problem. I just signed those. Thank you. Awesome. Any other financial updates we want to look at? Um, so we're going to have some finances to talk about with FY21, but I think public comment is in between. So I don't know if you want to offer that, although it doesn't look like we have public besides May. Um, May so okay. Otherwise, I can keep going. Okay, keep going. Okay. Um, so what we've done between the last meeting and today was look at our expenses through the rest of the year uh, to determine what we would have for available funds to see how we could support FY21. Um, so Darius, do you wanna share your screen? I did send out this document, but it's been working well for him to share and then I can talk through at the same time. Um, I've been going through the full presentation and then saving questions till the end. That way, if I answer something in the presentation, we don't have to stop mid cycle. Um, and I know we're pressed for time. so. I'll try to talk as quickly but clearly as I possibly can, and then we can certainly go back for questions. And can everyone see that his screen there? Yes. Yep. Great. Uh, so the FY20 budget that was approved of uh, $1,952,272 uh, has a remaining budget balance of $113,049.89 to be left uh, left to be spent between now and June 30th. So I looked at that number to see what I thought we would spend between now and June 30th for various uh, account lines, such as um, utilities, central office expenditures, the Conway portion of that, professional development. Um, we will still be spending some money on office supplies, copier leases, those kinds of things. Um, so I'm projecting that we're gonna have about 43,000 of that 113,000 that will still be spent between now and June 30th. So that would leave a savings for frozen expense accounts of roughly 70,000 for Conway. Um, so we have a couple of options to look at with using those funds. Um, the first recommendation that we're making is to reallocate roughly 15,000 of the school choice, uh, not school choice, I keep saying that, I said that last time too. Sorry, school lunch expenses for wages and salaries, moving those onto the general fund. Because if you remember, a couple meetings ago, I gave you some projections of what I thought the revolving accounts would look like at year end. And Conway's school lunch account is looking to be about 15,000 negative. So we want to correct that negative balance um, and not deficit spend. So we need to move that money over to general fund. Um, and then we're also looking to encumber about 15,000 for technology needs. Although there is some question right now whether or not that technology would fall under the Municipal Cares Act relief. Um, so that might be money that we don't actually have to spend if we can put it in with Conway's submission for the Cares Act funding. Um, and if that's the case, we would have an additional 15,000 that we can reallocate to school choice. And then the remaining amount of 40,000 roughly, which could be increased um, depending on expenditures, we would reallocate to school choice to help support a um, budget cut for FY21. Uh, so for FY21, uh, we did previously approve a budget of $2,367, which was an increase of $48,089 over FY20. That was a 2.4% increase. And that increase was related to teacher uh, wage increases, step and COLA. We do have a placeholder in there. We are still in negotiations, but we have a placeholder for that increase. We have IA contract that is already settled. So we have those wage increases, non-union personnel wages. Um, and then we have some minor salary expenses, non-salary expenses. Um, but the thing with the non-salary expenses is where we did increase a line, we also 
offset by reducing somewhere else. So the majority of that 48,000 really is salaries. Um, I did also want to note here that we added a position, however, it is going to be funded through the revolving account. So what we're talking about at this point is leaving that on the general fund because there is a significant need for that position to still be at the school um, and not changing our request to add that position in. Um, but we all know by now that uh, state and local revenue will be down for FY21. Conway has not asked for a specific reduction amount. However, um, we are looking at making some changes just so that we can prepare and be phys fiscally responsible. Just as an example here, um, there was some rumor in, in other towns about a 20% reduction in Chapter 70 aid. Um, and that for Conway would be a loss of revenue of about $125,000. We don't expect that Chapter 70 will be reduced by that significant of a number, but that towns will get hit in other funding areas. Um, so while it's a more significant number at the school level, the towns might still have greater impact. Um, so we're not talking about proceeding with that level of a cut at this point. Darius, do you want to say anything else to that? I know you had at other meetings commented on the revenue loss to towns. Yeah, I mean, I don't, it, the, the rumors coming out of, uh, the thoughts coming from our state legislators are saying that um, they may try to level fund chapter 70 from last year, um, which just means they're gonna hit the town with other other lines that doesn't directly hit the school, but if the school, and I say us and Frontier together, um, make up you know, 60, 70% of the budget, um, if they hit other places in the town, if we're that percent of the budget, we're still going to be looking at um, needing to help the town by reducing our budget. And so um, that's where we're going to go next. The recommendations. Do you want to go? Keep going? Yep. So it's our recommendation to move forward with a level funded budget, meaning that we would spend the exact same amount that we did in FY20. So we would be looking to make a $48,000 reduction from the previously approved budget. So we did those numbers and the first steps that we took were to reduce any non-salary expenditures that were increased to bring them down to the FY20 level. And so that resulted in cuts of $19,250. And I have listed here some of the more significant expenditures that were reduced. Um, 2,500 we had added in for teacher mentor stipends. We're gonna move that back to the grant that was funded from a REAP grant previously. So assuming we still get those funds, we'll continue to pay it from there. Uh, we had added 2,000 for general supplies and 2,000 for building supplies. So we're gonna pull both of that off both of those items off. And then we had added 3,000 for building general repairs. So I reduced that back down to last year's level. And then we had added 7,000 for special education transportation, which I just wanna note, we still need, we can't re re eliminate that transportation line um, increase, but what we are gonna do is move it over to school choice so that we could reduce the general fund by that amount. So after those reductions, we're looking at a $28,839 decrease that still needs to take place. Um, and given that we're projecting to have about, uh, what did I say, 40,000 in access that we can move into school choice, the recommendation is that we fund that remaining $28,000 that we need to reduce with school choice funds. It's essentially savings from this year. It's not dipping into the existing reserves. Um, so our budget after all of those cuts would be brought back to FY20 level. And um, there's just a couple of other concerns that I wanted to point out that are on our radar. We don't have to take action on them right now, but I do think it's something for us to keep our minds on. Uh, the early childhood program had a $25,000 revenue loss due to the COVID school closures. This is gonna have an impact um, primarily on the FY22 planning, not necessarily on FY21. Um, Conway still has some funds in their revolving account to support the FY21 expenses and will help still have a healthy balance at the end of next year, but it's depleted. So, you know, we are gonna have to look at how we're supporting early childhood in FY22, something that we can't wait to talk about. So just getting it on your radar now. Um, also not sure what other COVID related back to school expenses there could be, whether that's additional nursing supplies, um, custodial supplies, you know, other things that we have to put in place for technology and what have you, the ten to $30,000 estimate there is really pulled out of thin air. Um, Darius and I are talking to 
three, sometimes more times a day about it's, all of this possibility. It's pretty a low estimate from what I'm going through at work. I mean, you got to increase your janitorial, like so surfaces have to be touched and cleaned like multiple times a day. I mean, I just, that's going to be a lot more money than that. And I would agree, and I would agree. And I was on a call this morning where we started with area superintendents and talking about because we're finally getting some CDC. You know, this was written prior to the CDC guidelines that came out this weekend. Yeah. Um, and some of those things that they're putting into place, uh, I don't know how we're going to afford or set up. Um, I'm still kind of in the shock and awe of it in the sense of uh, reading through it and trying to digest what's going to happen. I think either way, there's two ways we can approach this. Um, one, we're just kind of putting on the school committee's radar and not putting it into the budget because other schools, you know, talking to other school districts, they're actually putting a line item for, you know, COVID um, expenses that they're estimating and they're putting maybe $100,000, um, again, larger schools, um, or maybe two, up to $200,000. Some of the larger school districts are doing that. But they have to put in their budget because they don't have the reserve accounts that we do. Mm -hmm. So like we could put a holding number in to the budget and then have to reduce the budget further. Or we just kind of say, listen, these are going to be possible you know, further um, costs down the line. It, you know, it's just different ways of how you want to look at the number. Um, well, the other thing is, who do you have right now who like at my job right now, every time we see a grant pop up for this money or that money, you know, I have somebody who I say, look at this, can we apply? And we're getting, you know, a thousand dollars here and we're getting um, hopefully like ninety thousand dollars from the FCC and we're getting, you know, uh, something from the uh, foundation, community foundation, you know, because every time I see something pop up, we're applying. But I don't think you have a grant writer, do you? We don't have a grant writer and those who are doing, those who have done some of those after larger grants would be um, Sarah and Kim have done those kind of things. Um, they're kind of all hands on deck trying to digest, um, you know, the current remote learning thing. And then, you know, looking at summer programming right now and also looking at, um, so we just don't, and, and looking at how we're gonna go back to school next year, which is gonna be a momentum um, planning. Um, I mean, yeah. I don't know if as much comes up for school systems, but, you know, we're seeing at least one or two a week that we're jumping on. Um, I haven't heard a lot of small stuff for school systems. I mean, we're, we're looking at the, the municipal one right now. There is the uh, CARE Act that is going to, you know, that we will get an extra uh, $20,000, Con, we will get from uh, the federal government as well through the Title I um, allocation program and so there's other monies coming in um mm -hmm. it's just hard to add them all up and throw them on a sheet of paper it's not hard to adding them up and throwing them on the paper right now when they're still kind of in flux we're also working with the town to see what things we can put on as covid um related expenses and we're going to estimate what they are going to be moving forward and that's going to um that will be this thirty thousand dollars hopefully if not more um, that we go through that way. Um, and Phil may even know more yeah, about that. I mean, we were just talking about the custodial in the clinics. You know, if every time you have to clean the bathroom after a client goes in it, and I mean, there's no way you can do that in a school. Every, you know, I just can't even, you know. That's right. I mean, they're, they're yeah. one of the, I mean, one of the things that came out of the CDC was about the number of passengers on a bus. You know, with spacing every other seat or something like that, you're talking about like 12 passengers on a bus. How's that going to work? So, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that still has to be unfolded, and there's still a lot of time between now and in uh, September, but it's starting to heat up in the sense of. And our kids going to have to wear masks. And there's a question there. CDC's guidelines regarding kids wearing masks is kind of vague. Um, one minute they're saying you it, and then they're saying maybe not. Um, but. You know, um, a lot of the planning right now is assuming that students will be required to wear masks. You know, we would have to provide masks. And then you start, talking sure. about, you start talking about, you know, 1,500 masks a day. Yeah. But that's yeah. just the students. You um, won't get 1,500. You won't get your hands on 1,500. 
Well, you know, and I was talking with uh, Northampton superintendent today, uh, John Provost, and, you know, they got a plan. They, they're kind of a little bit ahead um, in the sense that they got a, they're probably a week or two ahead of us in planning. But they were talking about, you know, cloth masks and then each color, for, different color for each day to make sure that they're being exchanged out and then washing them and then finding a vendor to wash or do it in house or whatever to make sure they're sanitized. So uh, you can just imagine the, 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 it's the not nightmare because I'm living it um, right. of kind of planning that's going to that's going to have to go into reopening the simple thing like masks. No, I'm living it right now. Um, I can imagine. I can imagine. Just And that's going to be a three hour administrative discussion. That's just masks, let alone curriculum, how we right. get the kids to school. If we're going to be at a what the number of students that are going to be allowed in the building um, yep. and classroom size. Is, like and we never really closed. I mean, my clinics are still open. I mean, tra foot traffic is way down, but you know, we're, we never, cause we're essential. We never fully close the doors, but you know, once we get clients start feeling comfortable about coming in again, I mean, it's just going to be a insanity. Yep. It's really hard to breathe through these masks. I can't imagine students being able to keep them over their nose all day. The cloth ones are very hard to breathe through. The medical masks are much are lighter, weight, but they're disposable and they only last, you know. Yeah. So you, you well, the, Yeah, I mean, imagine a third grader with a runny nose and a mask on. Yeah. So, the kids are going to be lip, put, pulling them down because it's hard to uh, breathe. You it's going to be a... It's going to be a sloppy whatever thing. It's going to have to be exchanged like several times a day. Yeah. Oh, kidding. Yes, no. the little kids are not as snotty as you think they are. <laughs> Darius has nightmares of little kids being snotty. They're not as snotty as you think you are. <laughs> I know. I like my booger reference, though. He does. Mention, yeah, he does mention that a lot. Yes, Phil. So just a few things. So first of all, I did... Um, uh, I'm glad that you gave credit to the town and the select board and the finance committee for being, we're the, we're the only town that didn't make specific financial demands of uh, the administration. So, and I'm, I'm proud. I, I think that's great. And um, it shows a level of trust and a great working relationship with the school that there was, you know, uh, 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 the, but I will say that the, our select board chair did form his own sort or was part of sort of a, shadow school committee that did meet with the superintendent and did did urge budget reductions but um but it this is a pandemic and i did think that e even though that is sort of like a trampling of the school committee kind of a thing or but that it's still it, it's good for everybody because the more exposure to our competence and institutional transparency and all that the better for everybody um and the the other thing is that the town you know, we, we just did a four hour budget meeting last night with the finance committee and we sort of the the, the town overall loss in revenue, we, we anticipate to be about 10 percent from last year. Um, and the that the process, which is four four hundred and something thousand dollars for the town, the town can deal with three hundred thousand dollars of that through capital stabilization and uh, free cash. But that last hundred thousand dollars, it um it is going to require significant hardships and, you know, uh, zero for zero raise for everybody. All the things that I was concerned about a couple of weeks ago when I first found out that Frontier was doing a level budget um, that, you know, these these uh, into the, these expenses in the town government with specific big pay raises, all of those have been taken out now. And so, you know, I can honestly look at it and say the town is really has really tightened its belt. And um, Excellent. So, so, you know, and even though I am philosophically opposed to the concept of level budget, just because the world is not a level place, um, th 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 this is a pandemic and this is just not a normal situation or a no normal year. And yeah. um, reality corners me sometimes and forces a change of opinion. Um, yeah. And so this is one. So t to me, this seems like a reasonable um, uh, uh, a, a reasonable budget stance and, I agree. and a good place to be in a town meeting because the, you know, don't forget, we're still asking for a significant sum out of um, uh, pr preservation, the preservation act for the playground, which is a significant sum. And so to be able to stand there and say, you know, on the one we submitted a level budget 
and then still be able to ask for multi hundreds of thousands of dollars on something that doesn't come off the budget, but is still a significant expense um, and, and a bad year to have to ask for that. Um, yeah. But but uh, but nonetheless, it's on the it's it's in the warrant. It's on the books. We're going to work. You know, we're full speed ahead on that. So, mm-hmm. you know, that that's the bright side of it, that you get to stand there and say, look, we're really trying. And so it makes it easier to ask that. Um, for the, for that playground, and Kristen, is our is our playground going to be self cleaning and self sterilizing between between each touch by a child? Well, <laughs> <Called> Mr. Joanette, <laughs> <laughs> somebody yeah. ought to find one of those real quick. And, and I think I all of us are all of us are just sort of really nervous about this coming up this cycle of town meetings, just because. The level of fear and anxiety that's out there is just really off the charts. Yeah. And don't know how that's going to manifest, but there's going to be left turns and weirdness in every in every town meeting is my prediction. Um, and, and just so the others know that, you know, the between frontier frontiers uh, reduction to Conway is fifty four thousand dollars. And this is a forty eight thousand dollars. So you're talking about one hundred and two thousand dollars in reduction. Um, of what was going out there. So um, I know that's not the percentage of the budget we take if you're talking about a $400,000 shortfall, but, um, you know, my concern is that, you know, we may be talking again, and I just let school members understand that we might be talking again if if, if the town gets blasted when the state budget comes out, um, we may have to be talking again mm-hmm. about how we adjust it. Right, Bill, am I correct in that? Yeah, I, 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 you know, the, the and it's so hard when, when you're driving blindfolded, it's so hard to know where the turns in the road are. Um, it, it, and, and that's exactly what, so, you know, you don't, it, 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 significant cutbacks more than this were, are really cut into people's, really take food off of people's table. And um, and, and I, I hesitate to do that without just a, a real knowledge of that th- this is necessary. Um, right. So, so, so I, I think we've kind of. I, I think you're, you're striking a good balance in being responsible yet not too hurtful to the people involved. I agree. Darius, at what point might we all know if the kids are going back to school? I'm just wondering. I mean, schools will have to have time to prepare for that and know what they need to do. I mean, I would imagine a decision has to come out at some point, like midsummer. Well, yeah, I mean, so basically, um, I mean, we're preparing for them to be going back to school right now in in some capacity. Um, You know, the question will be, it it all falls in, you know, if you follow the governor's every three weeks new phase, you know, we would be back at school on time if everything, if the virus is going to behave, um, you know, that kind of thing. But, you know, you could have setbacks, you could have relapses, you could have that second wave they're talking about. So, Going back is going to look a little different because we're going to be prepared to go remote again. Um, and yeah, there's a lot, a lot of factors in that, you know, and, um, you know, what are the, you know, what are the parameters in which we go back that they're requiring us to, to, to have, you know, are we taking temperatures? Are we reducing class sizes? Do we have to, you know, we're going to have people that may be vulnerable, do, be medically vulnerable to be in the environment and how are we going to work with those? You know, um, it's going to be, it's a, the it's a lot planning, to put together. right. The planning itself is several pages long just to map out the planning of all the things we have to do, let alone the action plans for each of those things. So it's, um, it's a lot. And so um, I'm, to be honest with you, tonight is our monumentous occasion. If we can get this budget done, then I got all five budgets done. Shelly would in her first year, We'll have done where most business managers do one budget. You'll have done ten. Yeah. Think of it that way. Ten um, with more grants and movement and numbers that I've ever seen in, in education. So um, it really is. So it is kind of like I don't know what you know. The, the administrative mindset is like we're getting through tonight, and then Shelly and I have a long meeting tomorrow to go through some other stuff. But it was kind of like we had to kind of keep our sanity, keep one one step at a time with a plan moving forward. But well, it would take you a good drink to celebrate your 10 budget, Shelly, but we can't do that right now, but we'll make it up to you after it's all over. 
Yeah, we're going to the con. We're going to the Conway Inn as soon as it opens. <laughs> yeah. um, but it. the uh, yeah. we're holding you to that one. Yeah, and, it, and this goes into what I'm going to talk about later. But you know, we have a meeting set for Tuesday where administratively we're going to launch our um, our planning, our phase of planning. We have drafts of it out now amongst in front of administrators, and then we'll be on that kick. So um, yeah, we'll be doing something in the fall. I say that that way. I was holding my head in my hands earlier today, trying to figure out, you know, all the different things. But um, so Shelly put up in the chat box the number you're going to have to vote to modify your budget. Um, the only question we had on there was that earlier, um, you know, we, we had boosted up some of those lines that, you know, um, there was strong statements about, you know, let's support all the parts of education. Just knowing that we're going to reduce those again, we can boost them up later. I think if we, I think Kristen's comfortable with those lines being reduced, that we're still going to be able to uh, have, you know, deliver, deliver a solid product. It's not going to get in the way, but it, it's one of those things we'll, you know, we'll remember and we'll address when times get better to bring those 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 supply items and those other small things back up. I just had Kristen <laughs> finally putting things in the budget that she really wanted and needed and actually spending money and now we take it away from her doesn't it took you five it took you five years to do that no kidding unbelievable <laughs> timing is everything i guess huh there went yeah. the copy paper yeah <laughs> exactly yeah. all right could i get a I mean, motion yeah, to to the, 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 playground and the copier without the copy paper yeah <laughs> To modify the budget to one million nine hundred fifty-two thousand two hundred seventy-two dollars. Second. Okay. So you're gonna need, you're gonna need to do a roll call vote. You okay. don't want to be messing up the budget votes. All righty. Uh, Denise. Approve. Michael. Yes. Phil. Yes. And I also approve the budget, so it's unanimous. Thank you. Thank you, Shelly. All right, All right, so, so I'm gonna turn the meeting over to Michael to run. And I may come back if my other meeting goes, I'll try to join the executive session or whatever if I can, because uh, hopefully my meeting will be short. Thank you, Elaine. All righty, no problem. Take it over, Michael, we're at uh, public comment. Thanks, everybody. Thanks. All right. And I, uh, I don't have the agenda up in front of me because so I. So I'll, I'll I'll walk you through it, my Mike. computer. Yeah, I don't think we have any public yeah. on for public comment. Meg already kind of said she's got nothing for us hey, right Bob, now. Bob, Bob she's got plenty, but nothing to say at this moment. <laughs> Bob's, um, Bob's on. Yeah. Is that public? He's, he's considered public. Public at large. Um. The, uh, I'm the next good, thing is thanks. voting on the policies, and I'll, I'll walk us through it if you want, Mike. Hmm. I'd appreciate that. Yeah, I don't have um, my other screen up. To That's fine. Read through. That's fine. So. We don't. Outside of this, we don't have a whole lot of extra to do. Um, so basically, you guys got backlogged because we canceled your meeting, and then we didn't deal with the, the policies on one of the meetings because we went long, and I think we just skipped over it, and I didn't wave my arms because I think everybody was exhausted. We have a bunch of policies to update. Um, this is just doing it in two parts. Um, we have the, uh, I'd have to get my notes to go through the, the, these are, a lot of these are, agree with whoever that said that. Uh, the first five are um, basically rewritten policies of ones we've already had that really make sure that we are making sure that all students are, no matter what their backgrounds are coming into it, are treated equally, the equal educational opportunities, um, the educational equality, the homeless students enrollment rights and services, the educational opportunities for military children, the educational opportunities for children in foster care. Um, all of those are basically um, making sure that whatever we do, we, we're, we're now putting, um, these students are, already have a lot of obstacles in their lives that we're not using those obstacles against them. You know, for example, if a when it was a military child and they transfer their senior year, and they don't have enough credits to graduate, um, but they weren't in our system to begin with. We're not penalizing them because of their been being bounced around from school to school um, because of their, their parents are in the military service. 
same kind of thing with homeless, you know, those kind of things. Those are, those are the gist of all those things. Um, so those are all rewritten ones. And so I would vote that I would move that you vote those five and then we vote, then we move and I'll explain the last four because the last four are removal ones. <clears throat> so move. <laughs> we lost Michael. I will say, uh, I'm back. I had to. Okay. Sorry, I'm. Uh, I'm yeah, take care a, of the public there. <laughs> I'm. I'm managing a, a seven month old at the same time. So. Um. So, uh, I'll. Are we at second? We need a second. Or do I need to? Denise needs a. I'll second. To say or second. Somebody. All right. Michael now says all in favor. <laughs> all, right. all in favor? Yes. Yes. All right. All right. Sorry, my daughter just came in the room too, so now I have two kids. Excellent. <laughs> the next four um, policy, I'll just keep going, Michael, and you can yell at me later, um, is to remove all of them that are either redundant or found elsewhere illegally. Um, the basic instructional program, the student insurance program, there's now a law regarding student medical insurance. Uh, the guidance program is is redundant and the student gifts is now under the ethics law. So again, those are all um, ones just to remove because of they're either, again, redundant or followed, replaced by law. So the two faces I see, can you go first and second? <laughs> first. Oh, he had to go get his kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, That's great. <laughs> can I get a second? Bill says second. All in favor? Yes. All right, so I'll, do you want me to do the roll call, Darius? Or? Nope, we, we got Denise, yes. Bill said yes. Yes. Can you yes. say yes? Yes. Michael no said yes. Says I can't. Michael There's says no rule yes. that says I can't just act as a facilitator. Okay. At least uh, as far yeah. as I know, as long as you let me. Um, all right, so new business is the it's, next agenda item. Um, basically, uh, gonna, uh, Kristen's going to give an update of what's going on, the fabulous stuff that's happening in Conway. I get to give my little speech first. Um, Conway is is killing it. And I think I said this at the last meeting, but they continue to, and they really are doing so under Kristen's leadership. She's not just um, she's not just kind of making the and making the teachers deliver, but she's inspiring them to be creative and um, just keeping it fun. And I'll tell you what, not just inspiring them, but then we got a great staff that are, are, are jumping to the challenge. Um, they have from the very beginning, and I've said that before, that's been the difference between our district and some other districts that I hear that where things aren't going as well, um, is that our staff jumped on from the beginning um, and involved as we made the changes that things went along. Um, but I really mm -hmm. have to say the Conway staff has really done it with even more creativity of trying to do a lot of fun things. So um, I'm not going to try to pretend to uh, not pretend. I'm not going to try to say all the things they they're doing. Kristen, I'm going to leave that to you. I don't want to take your report away, but I want to say special thanks to you and your staff. You guys are doing a great job. And I think um, um, you're getting lots of credits and a lot of kudos from parents and I'm hearing about, but um, I don't think the kudos can stop because the amount of work that you guys are doing. Oh, thank you, Darius. Well, as I tell you, it's the best job in the world. And it's, um, I, I say this over and over again, but this is a staff where, you know, you push them a little bit and then they go farther and farther and farther. And they're, they're always willing to grow and jump in. And, um, you know, I always get the fun part of the meeting because I get to talk about Conway Grammar School. There's nothing better than talking about Conway Grammar School. So I'll go through my report real quickly. Um, so we have entered oh, phase three, which we're calling for it. Phase one was connections. Phase two was connections through learning. And phase three, which was the remainder of the school year closures, connections through student growth. Uh, we did not want our students to just stay sort of flat and maintain. We wanted to push them to the next level. So when they go to the next grade, they'll be that much more ready. Although we've ensured parents that we're going to meet them wherever they are when they come back. Um, so we've had a, a fam we did have a family meeting and we often have family grade level drop in sessions where we can talk and answer questions. Our IEP and 504 meetings are up and running. We're actually almost done in meeting the mandates for those. Um, 
the continued high quality instruction and um, support for students. Um, you know, we have we have some IAs, we have many IAs meeting with individual students at the beginning of the day, helping them set up their schedule for the day. What are the focus? What are the projects we're going to be doing? I mean, it's just very individualized. Every single person in this school has just stepped up 100%. Um, some of the great things, oh yeah, Phil, I wanted you to know I'm now going to be an uh, 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 editor, I'm going to be uh, submit um, articles to the newspaper. I just submitted a really big. And Wonderful. They, they loved it so much. They say it's going to be the feature article in wow. the next preview. So yeah, so that's exciting. Um, we'll eventually get kids to submit stuff. So um, at the last meeting, I went through a all the things that we've been doing in addition to the teaching times and the Google meeting times and the class meetings and the small group teaching and Paulette Lovechuk doing her reading groups and Carol Kirkalonis. In addition, we've, I, I, you know, I want to keep the kids busy for a couple reasons. The morning is strong academic time for them, but I want to keep the kids busy as long as we can throughout the days um, and, and hitting as many kids as we can for, so that they still feel connected other than the academic work, the social piece, and also, it's really clear in my mind that parents are working. Parents are working at home. Parents are working out of the home. So the more that we can offer these kids, that's been my goal since day one. Let's offer. Let's invite. They can take what's right for their families and their kids, and they can leave the rest. And the attendance has just been phenomenal for our kids with all the different events. So last week, we had um, Tyler Conroy come and he did a great concert for the kids. Kids were dancing. We had so many kids there. They were smiling. And throughout his concert, he was delivering messages to the kids about being themselves. I mean, Meg, wasn't it a great way to end our week? I mean, I had tears, people. It was great. Um, we started Harry Potter Read Aloud. So we have um, someone just started this week at seven o'clock, a couple of days a week. And our first one was Monday, and, and the little kids are in their pajamas in there, in bed with their pillows, and they're listening to Harry Potty, Potter. So, so we're doing that several times a week. Um, Meg has started a cooking club with the kids, which has been really great. We have math clubs, reading clubs, writing clubs, arts and, class, uh, arts and crafts. And then the last four days of school, is we're, we're going to make it uh, uh, you know, fun for the kids. So I've asked every single staff member to come up with a 20 minute something that they're going to do with the kids. Oh, we had Mad Live Broadway, Mad Live, Li Mad Live Live. So we had some Broadway singers do Mad Libs with our kids um, and they did songs. And so the kids were, you know, give me an adjective, give me an adverb, give me a noun. And they did it K, one, two, three, four, five, six. And then they put it into a song, a familiar song. And when these Broadway singers started singing, <laughs> if all of my eyes weren't sort of like, whoa, these were the real deal. Um, so that was a lot of fun. The last four days of school, I asked every staff member to give me 20 minutes of something they're going to do with the kids. Something fun, something educational. So, you know, some people are doing, you know, science experiments and scavenger hunts and alphabet games and we're going to fill those last four days of school i think we're going to have 48 things so it'll be like nine to twelve and uh, one to three and we're going to be offering um 20 minutes worth of sessions it's also going to give um staff time to sort of wrap up their own stuff um if everyone's giving 20 minutes and we've had a hundred percent participation rate so we're, we're pulling that together um just real quickly, phase three, we've continued with a, a more formalized feedback loop and um, accountability with the kids. So teachers were giving feedback on their writing and their reading and the math, but we, we just sort of increased that. Accountability, I talked with all the classes about, you know, these this is what we expect from you. We expect you to come to your Google meetings. We expect you to do what's presented that day. Um, and what, at the same time, giving parents permission to decide what's best with their fam for their families. It's adorable. I get emails from parents saying, dear Mrs. Gordon and Mrs. West, you know, Maddie, you know, will not be in class on Friday because we decided we're going to take a family, um, a family um, uh, hiking day. I mean, it's really cute. They're actually sending a, a notes about attendance as to why their kids will or will not be there. So that's been great. Um, we're, we're communicating a lot with the parents through meetings, uh, email, dojo, 
Uh, student items and curriculum materials have been picked up. Um, Bruce is cleaning the building. The breakfast and lunch plan is uh, program is still going strong. Um, we have some uh, senior senior uh, residents who are taking advantage of that. Um, we're moving forward with our kindergarten orientation on May 26. It's going to be virtual, but we currently we have um, actually 15 kindergarten students signed up. I had 14, but we got a new one. We're still going to do step up day with the kids to meet next year's teacher virtually sixth grade graduation is going to go on i'll have more information um i'll email out to you once we get that going um like Barry has said we're creating scenarios for the fall and then the emotional support which is one of the most important pieces of all of this um so as a staff we're really leaning on each other we come together a couple times a week sometimes it's just a check-in sometimes it's a more formal meeting um, Shafia Finger, our school psychologist, has check-in groups with grades two to three and four and five and then six. Um, she's doing collaborative check-ins with pre-K, K-1. She has a staff support group. She has a parent support group. Um, and so we are very, very, very busy at Conway Grammar School. We miss the students. Um, but I'm really proud and pleased of the work that we're, we're doing. I mean, this staff started on, you know, March 15th, 16th, and it was just full speed ahead. Um, I am the luckiest principal. Are we going through June 18th? Is that the, the last day? We are going to go through June 18th. That's a Thursday. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we're going to have just, like I said, those 48 wonderful things that we're, we're going to put out for kids to join us and do. Um, we're going to have a concert. I mean, I'm just really excited about that week because it'll be a last week of connections for the kids, you know, and there'll be things that they'll be wanting to come to. All right. The other <clears throat> portion of that is I was going to talk about what we're doing about summer and next year. Um, so, you know, we're working on summer programs right now um, and what that's going to look like. We probably have a release of that for next week. Um, in the sense of what we're going to do for those receiving um, special ed students who are receiving services during the summer is where we're going to start um, looking at those other programs. We still have to wait to see what the state's going to roll out. It's, it gets very complicated and also gets far more costly to do some of these programs that we used to run on a shoestring. So, you know, we'll be looking at that. And then, as I said, we're looking, we're starting the planning for the for next uh, next fall's reopening as well. So it's going to be a long, long course of, you know, taking in information, applying it to our planning, and then and then seeing what we have. So, you know, we'll give more feedback on that. Um, also, the next thing on the agenda is I'm looking probably to do a joint meeting in June. We have to do a school calendar. Um, we kind of went back and forth on the school calendar where we had a draft ready for April. Um, and then we started saying when this thing rolled out, we were gonna say, what does the new school year look like? Um, it's still difficult. <laughs> Because we may create a calendar that, you know, gets modified in some things if we have to do shifting of how many people can be in a building and that kind of stuff. But we have to have something to generally to run off of. So we'll have that. I have to do a superintendent evaluation because something has to be submitted to the state that didn't they didn't waive that requirement this year. So I will do the uh, um, the, uh, the the survey form that I used last year using the the superintendent evaluation model, and I'll, I'll throw some information in there. I got to put that together. I'll get that out to you guys when I can. Um, so any questions regarding um, like next year and stuff that I guess in general that you can ask, you know, so much of it's in the air, but if there's any other kind of, you know, painstaking, those who are watching or wonder when school going to start, it's, it's going to be the last week in August, probably that Wednesday or Thursdays are the dates that we'll be throwing in front of the school committee. So um, it, it's, it's been that particular date. It's been around that date for the last 10 years. But I know I did get a parent parent phone call that wanted to know, and I'm like, well, don't rent don't rent your beach house that week because you're probably going back to school that week. So, um, you know, so do the week before. Um, but yeah, so is there any other anything else on that? No, um, there's significant concerns about town meeting and where it's going to be, and there's still a segment that wants it to be at the grammar school in the parking lot outside. Phil, I got to I got to tell you, you guys should really I was uh, Deerfield's looking to do it on the football field. Yeah. Um, and they're going to go through a lot of painstaking things because they're so they're much larger, obviously, in order to set it up. 
I would recommend, because I can recommend to you because you're on the select board, that you guys take a look at that. You know, Conway would be interested in coming down the mountain. And just the idea that they're going to be, they're going to do all the legwork of how to do it. And then you just copy it. You have the stadium lights. You know, it's their regional school. It might be good to get some of them yeah. down there. We have a public address system, which is what we were really missing. Um, I mean, well. they're, they're going so far. They're they're paving in one of the they're paving in the road that goes into the football. Um, they're looking to pave the road going into the football, so paying a few thousand dollars just to make sure that those um, who need uh, hard surface, you know, handicap access can get there. You know, they have the track that's level. You know, people can park on that. People can get very far apart. My biggest concern is you go inside some of those closed spaces or even a closed parking lot. No, if I was Conway, I would do it on your, if you don't want to do it outside of Conway, I would do it where you guys did your uh, anniversary, you know, set up on the hill and everybody sits in the ball field right. below. Or that, something. that was the other thing that the concern. Yeah. I mean, that's what the health department wants it at. Um, yeah. But I, when, when, when that idea was raised yesterday, that was not, the, the, there's a feeling that for a lot of people in this town, that that's, that's a half an hour drive. If, if you're, you know, so um, it's, it's what is it nine minutes to nine minutes to Conway Grammar School from Frontier? Like we we right, right? If, Kristen? If you're on the Ashfield, if you're in the Ashfield side, it's twice that. Yeah, know? so it's yeah, total a good twenty minutes. Whoo, big, yeah, that'd right. be a big night out, perhaps. You yeah. know, so that's, a, that's they go to the they go visit the Flatlanders. Maybe they can go see the big Connecticut River. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. and I like your idea that you know they're moving away. You mentioned that Phil was on a phone call where they're getting away from tents and stuff. You know, I mean, do a rain day, and if you have problems with that, open the meeting and then delay the meeting to the following day, and it just stays open, like just like you do when you don't finish the business in a single day. You know, I, I... anyway. Yeah. Just good for thought. Um, the next thing on the agenda. What I wanted to say is that Conway's Conway's town meeting is scheduled for Saturday, June twentieth at one p.m location to be determined but uh but that's definitely something that we want to raise the word about because it, this year um the school the school administration the schools in general have sacrificed greatly to put themselves in in a position at town meeting where the budgets should sh should pass but um this would be a really good one for everybody to show up in this school community to show up because you don't know what could come what could happen at this one you really don't. Well, your only issue with your timing is you're going right in the middle of the day in the hot sun. So I don't know. <laughs> that was the computer. I was saying something there. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, the next thing on the agenda is reports. Um, the chair has left. The collaborative, who sits on that? They haven't, I think they have a meeting next week. I'll tell you because I was at the good news about doing this is like, <laughs> get to hear it four times. Um, the collaborative has as meeting. They have a meeting next week. Um, they have been supportive, the superintendents, and getting us together to discuss our things. They've been hosting those meetings, which has been nice. The principal's report, I think, was what Kristen just gave. Do you have anything you want to add, Kristen? No. Um, I'm good. Thank you. For, thank you for the best job in the world. To say that during this crisis is is saying something about her positive attitude. Um, and the next thing, the superintendent report was what I, all those things I've discussed. Um, we do have executive session on the agenda. If people would like to go to one, um, it's your call. So um, between Denise and Phil, I can't see Michael, if, if that's something you want to do. If not, we can adjourn. Either way, we'll adjourn to that close and then not go back to a, uh, an open session if that's what people would like to do. Sure. You would like to go to that? All right, so you're going to need to do a roll call vote to go to executive session. Um, to not return to MGL chapter 38, section 21 to discuss strategy respective to collective bargaining. Um, yes. Bargaining slash teachers, we will not return to open session. So, and for those of you on, we're going to go to your calendars and go to the other invite. This is going to take us to a whole other session so that there's no accidental cross feed of people. So, but you have to do a roll call vote to go into it. Yes. Phil? Okay. So I'll. Yes. Michael. Yes. Denise. Yes. All right. Very good.